Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, my name is Gamerzak and welcome back to Abandonware Adventures. You see that timing with that title? It's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to be looking at Outpost 1. Now, some of you have been recommending to me that I should be playing Outpost 2. I've never played Outpost 2, but I've played Outpost 1, and in Abandonware Adventures, now that I'm doing a live format, I am taking you on an adventure, and I will be your guide. And uh, to be a guide, I gotta know the game I'm talking about. So, I never understood this game when I was growing up. I had no idea what I was doing, I don't know how it works, I, it's just insane. But I kind of figured it out today, but the instructions and the tutorial are rubbish. It's basically a huge readme file. Um, <laughs> but this game plays the Mars song as in the classical Mars theme so song from, from, you know, the planets. And uh, I love the Mars song. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Outpost and uh, we'll see how the game plays. Because this is the game. When I saw um, Offworld Trading Company, I thought of this game. And I'm pretty sure the people who made Offworld Trading Company played Outpost because uh, Although it's not an economic RTS, it, it does have that sort of vibe of setting up a base on a foreign planet and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, there is an introduction. I'm going to click it and you'll see what, what, what this is. The playing time of the animated introduction is approximately 10 minutes. You can use Control Break to skip through animated scenes, Alt F4 on still images to exit the introduction. Do I want to continue? <laughs> this was a cinematic in 94 to 95, as it says down there. So in 94, basically, they were probably making this in 93. Not sure how long the development time was, but let's, uh, I, I will skip. I just got to remember control break to skip through animated scenes. All right. So I've actually, here's, here's something interesting about me setting up Outpost. It's in widescreen because it actually works in widescreen because this old tech is basically running on Windows and stuff like that. Uh, it didn't work with SimPark, but it does work in Outpost. Although the, the menus, you can see, it doesn't scale to things properly, but the background does, so I decided to put it anyway. Uh, and also, the sound, the music was louder than the speaking volume for your... AI, the AI which helps you through your, who talks through things. So I actually had to change the volume of the, the Mars song, which is what's used in this game. And it's a MIDI file. So I had to download a MIDI editor to reduce the, the volume of MIDI files. And you don't really reduce the volume of MIDI files because MIDI files sort of treat music as if you're actually playing an instrument. So you had to decrease the velocity of what the instruments were being hit with. <laughs> So I halved the volume, and now we can actually hear what people are saying. So I've, I've done some audio balancing on this game to make sure things sound nice. Now, control break, we gotta remember that. Okay, let's uh, watch some of the intro. Is it starting, or is it gonna crash on me? There we go. There's the Mars theme song. I love this song, not just because of this game, because my, my parents also had the planets, a, a CD, which, which they played sometimes. And this is the best one. Mars is the best song, personally speaking, just, just an opinion. You might, you might like the other planets too. For thousands of years, Earth has been the cradle of human civilization. See how interesting it is? It's got a still image with the narration. And then that same still now image it's time animated. To leave the cradle or die in the attempt. So, then it's gonna animate this scene. Now I don't want this to take ten minutes. <laughs> but so it's control break to skip. Computer projections show that Earth is about to be devastated by a visitor from deep space, an asteroid known as Vulcan's Hammer. With other planetary impacts expected, plans are made to leave the solar system. Probes are launched to look for planets orbiting distant stars. So, I will sort of kind of skip through some of this, otherwise this is going to take a while. The program is set in motion to build a starship. The fusion drive that powers the starship is untested. The ship itself 
was only large enough for two hundred colonists and the supplies that would keep them alive. Unfortunately, this fragile craft is the only chance for humanity to survive. Look at that animation. That's actually not bad. I mean, I've seen worse animation from modern games. This looks okay, look at that. I mean, the angles of things are slightly off, but in terms of texturing and the model quality, it looks okay. Let's, let's move on. Okay, things moving on, moving out. As the construction of the ship is completed in Earth orbit, you are placed in command. The ship's computer will be your link to your surroundings, all actions, and the fate of your colonists will be controlled from this room. This is a little painful to watch. It is a little painful to watch, but welcome to 1994. <laughs> With the packing and boarding completed, the Starship leaves Earth using conventional rockets. All right, we got blast off. I'm just going through this so you actually know the story behind Outpost. <laughs> so basically, Meteor's coming to Earth, we gotta leave Earth. A fuel station has been established to mine the atmosphere of Jupiter for hydrogen to power the starship. Fuel station around Jupiter? When this came out, most of us had 4 megs or 8 megs of RAM in our computers. That is true. I'm surprised it still runs on Windows XP. The launch of a second set of probes will gather more detailed information about the target star system. Now you have to sort of watch this, otherwise you won't actually know what's going on when you actually start the game. So that's why I'm going through this. A weapon has been launched to intercept Vulcan's hammer. Computer projections show that the weapon may be able to divert the asteroid's path. If the plan succeeds, the starship now orbiting Jupiter will be able to return to Earth. The plan to divert the asteroid has failed. It failed. Updated computer simulations... Basically, I'll, I'll just watch the simulation. This is what happens and why we, we have to leave Earth. They tried to blow it up pieces. with... Both pieces with a nuke. It didn't work. Split it to two, both are gonna hit Earth. Alright, alright. I'm in command. Fate of human civilization is in your hands. And there's our... That's the introduction. That's the introduction of Outpost 1. Now, let's go to a new game. From Mission Control to Outpost Command. Look at this window. The speed of light. Is that music really loud or is it just me? I'm sure I balance this properly. Let me just drop it a little bit. Alright. The speed of light, it's not just a good idea, it's the law. If you cho chose the small install, it's telling us if you have 8 megabytes of memory available, or if you have a low-end computer, you may wish to shut off tile animations. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Greetings, Commander. Welcome to the Virtual Command Environment. I'm the Artificial Intelligence who will be assisting you. Okay. What name do you use? I am Commander Gamerzak. What name would you like to give me? What name do we name the AI? I don't know. <laughs> um... Kali. The name of my cat, in case you're wondering. What level of difficulty do you require? Beginner! Jeez, if you play this game, do just start at beginner. It's, uh, it's, it's so hard to figure out what's going on. We already have some basic data. See how, how they master the audio differently? The voice suddenly is lower quality? <laughs> Alright, so we gotta find... Look, look how hardcore this game is. We've got four probes to send out to find a habitable planet, and uh, you just gotta guess where is good. So, um, let's, let's guess. Bernard Star? Star. Alpha Centauri? Alpha Centauri A. Let's uh, send something to Delta, Delta Parvanis. 
And Proxion. Alright. Everything's just unknown. I can nuke the music by like 10%? Yeah, let, let's drop it. Because the music is meaty, so it just goes up and down. It's just ugh. So, alright. I've dropped the music. Should sound better now. Uh... And this is after I halved the music volume. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it's old as dirt. I think your speech can take over. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. The music stops and then the gameplay has no music. It's just silenced. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, launch our probes. Now you must decide how many people you wish to save from death and what supplies will be required to support them. All right. So a mistake at this point will doom you and your colonists to certain death. Have a nice day. She's she is very talkative. All right. So what I remember in terms of this is basically get something of everything and you should be fine. So uh, this is your ship configuration. Basically what you're bringing along with you. You got remaining weight, remaining funds. All right. This is not quite a Kerbal Space Program, but. Uh, um, you can see, and basically, I, in, in my sort of earlier test, I just figured I'd take one of everything down here. You know, probes, observers, weather satellites, uh, solar receiver arrays, solar satellites. Takomak reactor is sort of a power generator thing. We want um, uh, cargo landers. We want colonist landers. And the rest, oh, we want colonists. And then we want to just boost up. What, what did I do wrong? Did I... I'm sure I used to be able to carry more than this. I need more food and life support. I can't just... Uh, all right, I dropped the cargo landers, increase life support, increase food. There we go. That's sort of the most efficient thing I can sort of figure out. Um, but yeah, let's launch. This is our setup. The VLBI probe data have arrived. Awesome. So we now get to see Alpha the habitable A. planet probability. 0 0.054. Barnard star. Zero. Delta Pavonis. Five seven. Sion. Zero. So basically our best chance is Delta Pavonis. Delta Pavonis. Right? And still, it's habitable planet probability. You still gotta just guess. <laughs> so let's go to Delta Pavonis. The fueling process is complete. You now have the option to commit your starship and your colonists to an interstellar journey. All right. Warning, starship must be launched last. Yes, you can accidentally launch a starship first and you'll never get the interstellar probe launched. Um, old games are like that. <laughs> uh, voice of that computer reminds me of one in X-series games. What are the X-series? Anyway, interstellar probe. Let's pressurize the fuel system. Let's launch the probe. And we get a little animation for the probe launching. Look at that. So that's our, our spaceship. Or is that the probe? That might be the probe. Or is that a... I think that's our whole spaceship. It's, it's that shape, right? Off it goes. I'm worried about skipping those, those animations. Uh, because uh, I might accidentally exit out of the game. Anyway, Starship. Pressurize the fuel system. Reactor to full power. And we're gonna launch the Starship. We have received the probe data on the planets in the target star system. Data will be presented as you click on each planet in the display. When you have chosen the planet you wish to colonize, click on the select button to calculate our final approach trajectory. Any mistake at this point will doom you and your colonists to certain death. Have a nice day. To be fair, voice acting wasn't all that common in the mid-90s. I mean, this is before StarCraft. This is before a lot of things. Um, I mean, there was some live action stuff before. I mean, we had Myst, we had Dune 2000 already out there. So there was voice acting stuff. This is, this is a pretty cool game for the time. Uh, anyway, we got to pick a planet. We don't want to land on the sun. Uh, let's see. So basically, Earth equals 1. This is comparison to Earth. Um, so what do, what do we have here? This is 350 centigrade. 
Interestingly, they, they use Celsius. Um, 350 once minus 170, 130 days, minus 23 average. That's not too bad. I don't want to land that. Okay. Um, this one, principal atmospheric gases, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. That one has helium trace. This has none. Escape velocity five. Right. I, st I think I remember you can actually build a spaceship and leave the planet. Um, solar energy received slightly less than Earth at 0.44. Surface gravity 0.38. Rotation period about 24 hours. So daytime is about the same. Mass 0.11 compared to Earth. But it's the best choice I think we've got. Orbital insertion complete. Stable orbit attained. Sensors activated for planetary scan. Here comes the music again. <laughs> you now have the opportunity to launch any satellites or probes you may have packed for the voyage. The launch of the seed factory will end this sequence. Any mistake at this point will doom you and your comets. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll doom our, ourselves and comments. Let's have launch nice day. the solar satellite. Deploy satellite. There it goes. We'll skip some of these animations. Weather satellite. There goes the weather satellite. Opening up and stuff. Communication satellite. So they all look different. They're all different models and stuff. Orbital observer. No sound effect for that one, I guess. <laughs> all right, geological penetrator. Let's send this down into the ground. How long will I be streaming? This is the, the last game. I'm going to do two games per Abandonware Adventures Live every Saturday. Um, so maybe until about another half hour, I guess. Finally, let's launch the Seed Factory. And we'll watch some of this. So this is our main lander, which is, uh, it's going to land on the surface and it will basically set up our base for us. So you can see why I didn't wear black today, right? <laughs> I'll just fade into the background. Anyway, no instructions here. Here is Delta Pavonis 3. We're going to stop the rotation and we get to have a look at a few of these locations on where we want to land so basically you want somewhere that's somewhat smooth that's not this sort of terrain so this is site two i mean you can have a look around some of this is uh, a little rough like th this really mountainy rocky stuff you can't you can't level it you can't build on it we could uh so some of this is okay like here nice smooth th these dot these markers are mine locations and uh we could sort of set up here. This is a pretty good one. We can look at a few more spots. See if we can find uh, any smoother areas. Here? This is all pretty rough. I mean, we got like a couple mine locations close to each other. This is not too rough. This is pretty good. Let's have a look at this spot. This is um, mine locations that are close to each other and smooth ground. No. Let's try up there. Oh, this is quite interesting. It's a nice, ridgy, sort of canyon valley thing. I think this is, this is where we want to go. And I think we only get to look at four, right? Yeah, maximum four sites can be viewed. You remember all of this, Banlish? <laughs> right? And I think here is a good spot because it's got mine locations next to each other. I think it's, yeah, here, and it's smooth ground. So we're gonna land here. All right, so we got our seed lander. We're gonna take this and we're gonna land right here, I think. Yes, we're gonna land right there. So we got site five. Here's our building options. Here's the planet we're on. There's no way to get it rotating again. And this is this is the end turn button. Look at this UI. This this is a terrible UI. This is our AI. So we, we recognize this shape because we saw it earlier. Yes, Commander. How may I be of assistance? 
So this is how you sort of learn things. But basically, to understand anything, you gotta press help. 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 <laughs> and she actually reads out everything. So for example, let's basic colony building. When you start building your colony, survival is your first consideration. The seed factory can only This is the tutorial. Started, so you have to do the rest. Now, I've, I've sort of read this before. Basically, you have to make sure people are happy and they don't die. Now, I'm gonna show you what to kind of do to make sure you don't die immediately. Um, but uh, you'll also see how difficult it is to figure all that out. This music is getting loud again. Let's drop that. Let's end the turn. And our seed factory is landing. And it sets up your first initial base. Look at that. This is what they considered futuristic technology back then. And look at that! Set up a base. And because, I think it's because I doubled up on my uh, population, I increased the number of people, there's actually an ally base that gets set up here. This is a terrible location to set up, honestly, because this is all mountains and they're never gonna grow. But... <laughs> um, I don't know why they set up there. The AI is pretty dumb in that regard. But here we go. This is our base. These buildings are under construction. Now if you see, if I end the turn here, well, basically, do I have a few things here. Let's see. We've got Robo Dozer, Robo Digger, Robo Miner. We can start getting things down. So we can put down a mine, which we'll put there. We can doze some of the land like here, leading to the mine. And Robo Digger sends underground. Now underground, is where things really do matter. So I'm gonna put that there. All right. Um, oh, it's not allies, it's the rebels. I don't know, are they friends or enemies? I can't tell, I can't remember. You played this when you were 15. You feel old? I played this when um, I must have been seven, eight, nine years old. So I had no idea what I was doing. Look how confusing this is. It's confusing as an adult. Um, let's end turn. Some things are being built. We have seed power number 349 it provides 50 power to your base robodoza is still doing fine you see this flat land is easy to doze so it makes way for buildings basically so we're gonna do this another building's done this is the smelter operational it's full all right let's keep dozing this land and we now have oh we get to choose a product Seed Factory 351. Like, I never did this when I was a kid. Like, um... It'll, um... It's, uh, it'll tell you news emails from your colonist management. Oh, okay. So we got to, um... Like, look, there's a, a truck. I'm sure trucks are important, but I've never built a truck in my life. <laughs> I guess, uh, we'll build a truck. Okay. And there we go. We have the underground. This is the, the way underground. And do we have things to build here? We could, um... Let's see, Robo... Digger, I think it is? We want to start expanding this. So I want to go south. Okay, and can we doze some of this land? Okay. So as, as your base sets up, you start to get more things. There we go. We've got our... And that's it, the music's ended, right? It's just gonna be quiet from now on. Uh, I could play Mars in the background, but we'll, we'll let it settle for a while. So this is basically our summary of our base. We've got one facility. No one's moved in yet because we haven't landed. Morale is 600. If it gets too low, people will just move out and just give up on you. But we have cargo lander and colonist lander. So let's go ahead and land our colonists here, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't think it has to be like uh, next to anything in particular. So let's land colonist there, land a colonist there. And we also have cargo lander. We'll just land it there as well. Probably not the most efficient. It's fine. And here we go. We're going to populate our base. And the music just stops. I think I will go ahead and play the Mars song in the background, but really quietly. Let me just pull it up here. I'll just let it run in the background. Very 
very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Ground mass, step off the land now. That's one small step for man. That's the actual recording of the moon landing, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, one colony one has lost one colonist because um, they just die. <laughs> so here, population we get 100, that's 99, our morale is down by 19. So we're gonna need to start building things. Now look at this. Solar power receivers, agridomes, factories, spews, chap. What? What is a chap? Chap apparently builds... Um, uh, it, it, it makes uh, atmosphere so people can live. Down here we got some tubes and stuff, but we gotta... Like, how are you supposed to know what to build? Basically, you can kind of copy the enemy base, but uh, in, this, in this particular case, they went and built on mountains, so I don't know if they're gonna be expanding at all. So let's... Uh, I'll just go with what I know. Let's uh, get... Now, and the Takomak reactor, I'm pretty sure that is radioactive and will actually kill people. So that's uh, really bad. Uh, so let's um, go ahead and put down an agridome. We definitely need food at least. Um, and we'll put down a chap. Oh wait, no, I remember. If you build too many things at once, it's said in the, the tutorial. If you build too many things at once, people just start dying. So we'll let that build first. Colony 1 has lost one colonist. How many turns does this take? Three more? So three more people die. Okay, there we go. So Agridome is now producing food. So let's see, food here. One Agridome total per turn, 10. Total in storage, 10. Okay. We're gonna need a chap. So let's go ahead and put a chap right there. And um, do we have the... Where's the Robo Dozer? We're gonna need a bit more space up here. Let's, uh... Where's a... Come on, where is it? There we go, Robodozer there. Let's go down. Robo Digger has expanded our underground place a bit. Let's uh, expand it eastwards here. Okay. And uh, down here, we're gonna have to start building things. Let's... Uh, doze a bit more this way. Go back up. We'll wait for this... Uh, chap to finish and we'll drop the Mars volume just a little bit. Keep in mind that music is not from the game, I'm playing it myself. Uh, let's uh, keep dozing around here. And how many turns? One more turn until this completes. Okay, so we will doze one more there. Okay, the chap is done and uh, it, it brings you to this screen as well. And I, it's, it's so hard to tell. I mean, atmosphere, chap capacity full, terraforming none, status none. I don't know if you need more chaps. Ah, looks like they are actually building things. You can see the the rival base builds a Tacomac reactor like really far out. They build two chaps. Maybe I should build two chaps as well because that seems important. Um, can I build another chap? There we go, another chap. So we'll place this here, I guess. You may not. Oh, I can't place it there? You may not. Why can't I place chaps? You may not. Oh, it's got to be connected to a tube, I think. Um, dirt, okay. Police, robot command, warehouse, storage tank, smelter. Um, but basically, our morale is almost half of what it started. And to get morale back up, you got to build things down here. I guess we'll put an intersection there and we gotta start building more stuff um, what do we need that's uh it's hard to see what you're actually building we don't need another agridome spew I guess we, we might need a spew where's the tube intersection I want to put a tube intersection here and see if we can also... We'll, we'll try to put down a spew. I think spew handles... No, I can't place it there. I gotta wait for the robo... Dozer, I think. There we go. Let's doze there. 
And now we should be able to put down the spew. Okay, so we're gonna be building that. And our morale is dropping and dropping. <laughs> Let's have a look at our rival. Have they built that? I'm pretty sure that's a Tacomac reactor. They built it like really far away. Underground, they've also got some stuff going. We'll keep uh, dozing here. Robo Digger can uh, continue expanding northwards here. Okay. Our mine is going. So it, it's building things. Let's, uh, do I have a, where's the tubes? Let's, I don't know if you're supposed to hook it up, but there you go. And we'll doze there. So you can see how confusing this game is because I, you just don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I think I'm doing the right thing. I don't know what the dirt does. But underground... Ah, there we go. We're starting to get things underground here. So let's... Uh, we can actually... We'll wait for this to complete. How's our morale? 220. It's, it's really bad. So I'm just going to start building things down here. Because morale... You gotta... Uh, build things to keep people happy. So I'm going to build residential. And we'll wait for that to complete. So we've got a spew. Uh, product MPG. I don't know what a spew does. I just built it because I was waiting for things. Um, we should build a recreational facility as well. You may not I can't place it there. It's got to be connected to the tube, I think. So there we go. We'll also... I think we need more residential. Population, total. Workforce unemployed. Residential structures percent occupied 376 for 94 people. So we definitely need more residential blocks here. All right, let's, uh... oh, it, it, it does limit, like, I don't know what the limit is in terms of, uh, um, like, building things. Like, you see here in the list, it's, um, it, it limits how much you can do. Let's uh, just keep dozing, though. We've lost one colonist. How's our morale? It's 142. It was 156. And, uh... We can't build any more there. We've got a recreational facility, so let's end... Oh, we can build something up here. Let's build... Storage tanks, warehouse... I don't know if any of those are, are important. We could try build a factory. You may not. Can't place it there. How about there? Okay, we'll build a factory. So we've lost one colonist. Are we building many things? How's our morale? 128, and it was one... Uh... 142. We gotta build more things, but I don't know if uh, more people are dying. There we go. The people hate you, Commander. I know the people hate me. Uh, <laughs> see, this is so hard. This is on the easiest difficulty. We gotta make people happy. I'm gonna put down. What? What's the enemy doing? They built. What is that thing? Police and residential? Does that keep, keep people happy? But I do know building a red light district keeps people happy. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and build that. That's going to be done in four turns. And people are dying, which means um, we've actually gained population. Percent occupied 400%. Can we bring this back or is morale going to kill us? That's going to be done in one turn. We have a red light district. And 62 to 52. Okay. So all I can really build now is... Um, I can't build any more here. Let's... Uh, what's the morale? Is it going back up? 52 to 42. People hate me. <laughs> um, I might just lose the game outright. Like right here. Um, maybe I shouldn't have built a spew? I built recreational facilities. We can go ahead and place that there. We will... Dozer there. Current 32 from 37. Let's build more... Residential. Morale is 28. I think if it hits zero, you lose. 
The people. It's at ten. Um. It's at twenty-two. Yes. Okay. Good. We needed to build more residential. <laughs> we just brought it back from the brink. I was. I thought I was gonna lose right there. Okay. But uh, percent occupied is still 190%, which means we should build more residential if possible. Let's go ahead and doze there. And we can put an intersection there. Is morale going back up? 34! Whew! I think we are one turn away from losing. You see how intense this game is? <laughs> Where's... It's, it's a little hard to click on things. I don't think we need to expand our underground anymore. It's uh, it's fine. Let's uh, make some room up top here. Gonna doze that tile. How's our... We need another bit of housing. Uh, where's residential? Build one there. It increases our population and also it keeps people happy, it seems. So we'll keep doing that. And let's doze that. We can put down... We can build a few more things here. Let's tube intersection there. And we could also... Let's see. Let's build... Robot command. Police. Dirt. What have the enemy built? Did they build a police? They built a dirt. And they got two chaps. I guess um, we'll build a dirt. I don't know what it does. I mean, you, you got to check the help yes, file for everything. Commander. And you got to go through this line. <laughs> She's so sarcastic. Um, help. help. Okay, can I search for dirt? Dirt facility. Dirt facility. The disaster instant response team facility. Dirt helps to minimize damage from unpredicted events that occur to your structures, such as meteorite strikes, explosions, and so on. Oh, okay. It's emergency response. Okay, that's that's good to have. Is our food okay? Our food seems to be okay. Population is 97. Is the, the house down here done yet? There it goes. Percent occupied, 130%. Okay, that, sh that should be fine. Our morale is going way back up. Can we build more things? I'm not sure if what you can build is limited by what... Wait, the people hate me? No, no, it's going back up. It's fine. Uh, let's uh, try build more things here. Let's, um, like, also this thing. I'm not sure if we're still making trucks. I, I really don't know. Robot command might be good. Can I build that there? What is this? I, I... I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this. What is going on? The the dirt is emergency response is complete. Okay. We're losing colonists? Oh, percent occupied is 228%. Okay. Now I do know that there are more advanced buildings you can build down here. So let's uh Start prepping for these. Um, we've got our robot command. I don't know what this does. Busy on level one. It it. We've got four trucks. Okay. And I think you can actually build more. Like dozers and stuff. I don't know if we'll we'll make a, a new one there. But here we go, we got a few choices here. I want to build a laboratory right there because you can actually research tech. And oh, oh, here we go. This is something I never knew. Look at that, I built a red light district. And the problem with that is it can turn other residential areas into red light districts. And I don't know if there's any way to, to destroy the red light district. Because remember I placed the residential there, it's now no longer a residential. So that's... Uh, Unfortunate. <laughs> That's the, the downside of... Um, I lost two colonists. Is it because... Yeah, I gotta build more residential because of that. Um, where is it? 
So we're losing colonists. Commander, the newspaper editor requests an interview with you. Okay. And it seems like another residential block has turned into a red light district. I don't know how to deal with that. I think I gotta build police stations, I think. Anyway, the newspaper editor requests an interview with you. Make an appointment, consent to interview, interview immediately. Okay, interview immediately. What happens? You're a bold administrator. It's a pleasure to be your assistant. Okay. That's kind of weird. Um, well, we got a laboratory and we got research topics. Now look at this interface. I have no idea what we're doing. Basic research. Just, yeah, just research. Just research that. How do I... Study. There we go. Study basic research. Now, how's our morale? Morale is good, but it could be because of all the red light districts. Let's uh, put down police. This might... Benevolent or hostile? Benev... Um, let's put... Hostile. No. Benevolent is fine. We just want to curb this uh, red light district from spreading. Because um, it seems like all of our... Housing is turning to red light. <laughs> Which is uh, not good. I'll put a tube there. Doze there. What is this building again? Recreational? Okay, so we got police. I don't know if that's gonna... Uh, stop it. We'll see what happens. We'll put another rec uh, residential there. Because I think we're... We'll lose morale. We're losing people, definitely. It was still over 100, though. Okay, but as you can see, things start to get more and more complicated. People are dying. Come on, get that. Wait, did I accidentally build the wrong thing? Damn it, I built recreational. Let's go ahead and build another. Make sure we get this right. Residential. Right there. Maybe I shouldn't have built the red light district, yeah? <laughs> um, can we... No. We can only kind of build one thing at a time. Okay, there's another... Residential. Let's, uh... Doze there. Doze there. Intersection there. Intersection there. Okay. It seems like the... The police station has... Let's try set them to hostile. Needs? Should be fine. Our power is actually kind of uh, low, so let's... Uh, we gotta start building more power because we're using 47 out of 50. So we gotta build some new power source. The solar panels are probably fine. People love me though. This is set to hostile? Yeah, that should be upsetting people, right? Uh, what else can we build? We could build an underground university. Oh, but we might have probably should have saved for power, right? Oh, we're currently using 50 of 50, so we shouldn't build anything else until we get more power. And we have a university. Look at that. Are we still researching things? Basic research. Progress meter. Okay. And this is basically... Outpost. <laughs> um, we're losing people, but our population's still going up. Morale's going back up. I need to be able to build... More power. Like... What's the... What are these guys doing? They built more dirts. Okay, they're, they're... Underground they got a lot of... What is this stuff? Administration. Police. Residential. No help available. University. Oh, okay. Commercial. You're on your own. Okay. So they built quite a few things. It seems like the red light districts have stopped spreading as well. And suddenly I can't build anything. 
I don't know how that works. But yeah, this has been Outpost 1. Um, I still, you can tell, I don't, I still don't really know what I'm doing. If I build a mine there, that should be fine. Commander, the newspaper editor requests an interview with you. I don't know what this means. Interview immediately. As you wish, Commander. I'll try to make it appear as if you're taking time out from your busy schedule just for this interview. <laughs> and yeah, and at this point, I'm not too sure what I can do. It seems like I've, I've, I might have trapped myself in something that I don't really understand. Because I don't have the build options. And they sort of come and go. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, this has been Outpost 1 and a trip, well, it's an adventure into an abandoned ware. And uh, Outpost 2 apparently is like a proper RTS or, or some kind of strategy game. And I'd be interested in checking that out if I could get it to run. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. This is Outpost. It's so weird, right? It's so strange. And uh, I'm sure I've gotten pretty far in the game in the past, but I never really knew what I was doing. You really have to read through all the help files to figure out what's going on. But, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed these trips down into some abandoned ware. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions, the videos will go up on the channel. And uh, getting Outpost to run, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It, it goes into widescreen by itself and it's fine. Um, Alright, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!